All right, so it's podcast number six for chapter 20, which is all about how do we affect our spontaneity when we couple reactions together. So what we need to think back on are the rules to coupling reactions, right? That's where we add reactions together, and then we see how are we going to manipulate some of the things that are involved. In Chem 1, we coupled reactions together, and we saw that when we did that, we could manipulate our enthalpies, and we could, when we coupled reactions together, maybe add those enthalpies and stuff like that. When we coupled reactions together and we were involved with our equilibria constants, our K, right? Remember when we add reactions together, we had to multiply or take the products of our Ks. If we multiplied a reaction through, right, our K would have to be raised to that power and stuff. So what happens when we're doing that with our Gibbs free energy? So a general rule of thumb when it comes to our Gibbs free energies, right? And again, Right. These are not hard and fast numbers, so I'm not going to ask you like, oh, if it's greater than this, if it's smaller than that and stuff. But, you know, just kind of understand that, like, right, when we do this, like when we have a very large K, that means we're basically going to products. When we have a very small K, we have almost no products and so we have mostly reactants left over. This is the same sort of a thing. It's just a generalization. When we have a bigger delta G, something bigger than positive 20 kilojoules, right, then... What we say is that that reaction basically doesn't take place very much, all right? Because remember, positive means that it's going to be non-spontaneous. So for a reaction from going from A to B, if that's non-spontaneous, then we're almost going to make no B, and we're going to be left with mostly A at the end. If our delta G is less than negative 20 kilojoules, again, when we have a negative delta G, that's a spontaneous reaction, when we have a relatively more negative delta G, more negative than negative 20, right, then that means that it's big enough or small enough, negative enough, that we're going to drive the reaction to mostly be products, right? We're going to have that being pretty spontaneous. We're going to be going to making a lot of products. So once we reach equilibria, there's going to be a lot of B and probably not much of the A or the reactant remaining. And then if we're somewhere in between those two, right, between plus 20 and minus 20, then we're going to say that once we reach equilibria, right, that we're going to have an appreciable amount of both A and B left over, right? Now, depending on which side of that you're on, you're going to have more A or more B. But, you know, for the overall basics of it, like, you're going to have some of both of them at the end. So then, what happens when we add reactions together, or what we call coupling reactions in chemistry, right, when we add reactions together, how do we manipulate our delta Gs? All right, so what this says here is that the reaction three, right, which another way of saying that is basically the overall reaction. Right, is equal to the sum of each one of the reactions, reaction one plus reaction two and so on. We could have reaction three, right, however many of them that we're adding together. All right, this is called Hess's law when we were doing this for enthalpy changes, right? When we had coupling reactions and we did enthalpies, we also summed up or added all the enthalpies of the individual reactions together. All right, now, another thing, if you multiply a reaction by a coefficient, You're going to also multiply the delta G by the same amount. All right, so if we had A going to B and the delta G for that was, say, positive 15 kilojoules, then the reaction of B going, or sorry, then the reaction of two A's going to two B's, right? Your delta G would be equal to two times your 15 kilojoules or 30 kilojoules. All right, lastly, if you reverse a reaction the sine of delta g 
will be the opposite. Okay, all we're going to do is switch the sign. So again, A to B, and we have that delta G is equal to 15 kilojoules. Then B to A, our delta G is equal to negative 15 kilojoules. And this goes back into when we talked about the fact that right, if a reaction as written is non-spontaneous, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. non-spontaneous spontaneous right because I reversed it I switched the sign and all of a sudden we've made a spontaneous reaction so our final sample problem is sample problem 20-8 says given the following standard free energies at 25 degrees Celsius we have N2O5 is decomposing into two NO2 or two NOs and three halves of an oxygen. We're given our Gibbs standard free energy change is negative 59.2 kilojoules for that. And then we have nitrogen monoxide plus a half an oxygen forming nitrogen dioxide. And we have the Gibbs free energy standard change as negative 35.6 kilojoules. I want to calculate the delta G naught at 25 for a coupled reaction. All right, so I've got to manipulate these two reactions. So I end up with the overall reaction that is shown here. All right, remember to do this, probably the easiest way that I do this is I find things that are only in one of each of the half reactions or one of each of the elementary reactions and in one place in the final reaction. So I see my N2O5 is right here and it is right there in the top reaction. That's the only place that it's in one of those elementary reactions. And then I have my NO2 is right here, and the only place I see NO2 is in the second reaction. So let's use those as my jumping off points. So let's start with the fact that the top reaction has N2O5 as a reactant, and there's one mole of it, and the overall reaction has N2O5, and there's one mole of it, but it's a product. So take the top reaction, and we're gonna reverse it. So I have N2, oops, sorry. I have two NOs plus three halves oxygens and the delta G. All right, all I did was reverse that reaction. So I'm gonna take the delta G that it was, the negative 59.2, and I'm gonna make it positive 59.2 kilojoules. All right, so that's one of them. Oh, this made into O5. Oops. I'm missing stuff there, okay. Next stop, right, we're gonna take bottom reaction all right so i had no2 as a product and i had one mole of it but i need to have two moles of no2 as a reactant so let's reverse the reaction and multiply by two All right, so when I do that, I'm gonna have two NO2s producing two NOs plus, all right, one half times two is one oxygen. All right, now my delta G for this, we've reversed it, so we're gonna change the sign, so it's gonna be positive, right, and we multiplied by two. So we've got to multiply through by two. So it's going to be 71.2 kilojoules. So finishing up our sample problem 20-8, right? We had the fact that the top reaction is 59.2 kilojoules, right? It's now positive. The bottom reaction is now 
are 71.2 kilojoules, right? Two times a positive 35.6 kilojoules. And so we end up with the sum of those equations, which is exactly what we were looking for, and our delta G, all right, well, we add those together, right? Unlike our Ks, we're going to add them together. So our 70.2 and our 59.2, or 71.2 and our 59.2 gives us an overall delta G of a positive 130.4, right? It's positive value. So again, right, that is a non-spontaneous reaction. All right, that concludes chapter 20, which is all about our thermodynamics. I will see you again for chapter 21, where we're going to turn our attention over to electrochemistry.